Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, coming to you this month from Belgium. We're here to find out how the country is preparing for a possible future of double trouble, flooding and drought. Will a master plan be enough to avoid a repeat of this kind of devastation? We have the obligation to ensure that any kind of intervention is good for both droughts and floodings, otherwise it will not work. That's our story coming up. But first, let's get the very latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. The planet as a whole just experienced its warmest June on record, with temperatures 0.7 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. Turkey faced heatwave conditions. Greece recorded its warmest June on record, and Cyprus issued a red alert warning for heat. In Western Europe, the month was cooler, and many saw temperatures below average for the time of year. June was wetter than average in the regions coloured in blue on this map. Heavy rain led to flooding and landslides in Switzerland, southern Germany, parts of France and northern Italy. Meanwhile, on the other side of the planet, Antarctic sea ice extent was 12% below average, its second lowest level on record for June. And so now to our report on how Belgium's facing up to a double climate challenge. When Belgium was hit by floods in July 2021, following record rainfall, they were devastating and deadly. Here in Pepinster, a village at the confluence of two rivers, the Brasser family's home was engulfed. This is the same street today. Their property and others have been demolished. Il faut se rendre compte qu'on avait quand même 5 mètres, entre 5 et 6 mètres d'eau qui sont arrivés au final dans la rue. Et c'était incompréhensible. Donc on a eu très très peur, on ne savait pas ce qui allait nous arriver. On a vraiment pensé même à la mort. Je vois bien qu'il y a énormément de changements climatiques pour l'instant. Et effectivement, les inondations en sont la preuve. A post-flood climate adaptation plan for the Vesdra Valley, including Pepinster, recommends reducing riverside buildings, like here, replacing pines in the surrounding hills with leaf trees which absorb more water, and framing agricultural lands with green areas, which has a dual benefit. If you have more green areas along the fields, it will be good for droughts also, because basically you modify the ground and you leave space for storing water along these edges, uh, and this water will progressively infiltrate the ground. Further along the valley, in Urpen, nature-based solutions are being deployed to not only help rainwater seep away, but also for cooling. This former riverside square is becoming a park, packed with trees, shrubs and flower meadows. But what difference does this kind of green area actually make? The damages when flooding is lower, and as regards with droughts, uh, basically it's retaining water where it is, and it contributes to lowering the, the temperature within cities, both surface and air temperature, which is good for inhabitants. Climate projections for Belgium to the year 2100 show temperatures could rise by up to three and a half degrees Celsius with over 50 heatwave days per year. As we look now at, uh, at the scenarios, even in the most optimistic scenario, we will have to do a lot of adaptation, which means to prepare for the climate change that will happen anyway. And that for that, uh, we need to know what's going to happen, where it's going to happen. We need to be more sure what is the local context, uh, what's the geographic context. Back in Pepinster, despite the flooding, villagers want to remain. C'est mon village et c'est le village de mes enfants. Je ne vais pas bouger d'ici pour la cause. Je resterai ici. That's it for this edition, but do head over to euronews.com slash climate now to learn more about how our planet is changing. Bye for now. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.